This is the Sabbath School lesson for the fourth quarter, 2021. Lesson 11 from our series Present Truth in Deuteronomy is titled Deuteronomy in the Later Writings, ready for teaching on December 11, and I'm Percy Harold. Tuesday, December 7. Deuteronomy in Jeremiah. Years ago, a young man, an agnostic, was a passionate seeker for truth, whatever that truth was and wherever it led him. Eventually, he came not only to believe in God the Father and in Jesus, but he also accepted the Seventh-day Adventist message. His favourite verse in the Bible was Jeremiah 29.13, which reads, And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Years later, however, he found that verse again while studying his Bible, but way back in the book of Deuteronomy. That is, Jeremiah got it from Moses. Read Deuteronomy 4, 23-29. What is the context of this promise to Israel, and how could it relate to us today? Deuteronomy 4, beginning at verse 23. Take heed to yourselves, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make for yourselves a carved image in the form of anything which the Lord your God has forbidden you. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. When you beget children and grandchildren and have grown old in the land and act corruptly and make a carved image in the form of anything and do evil in the sight of the Lord your God to provoke him to anger, I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that you will soon utterly perish from the land which you cross over the Jordan to possess. You will not prolong your days in it, but will be utterly destroyed, and the Lord will scatter you among the peoples, and you will be left few in number among the nations where the Lord will drive you. And there you will serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. But from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. As we already have seen, the book of Deuteronomy had been rediscovered during the reign of King Josiah, and it was under Josiah's rule that Jeremiah began his ministry. No wonder, then, that the influence of Deuteronomy can be seen in the writings of Jeremiah. Read Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 1 to 7. What is Jeremiah telling the people to do, and how does it relate to what had been written in the book of Deuteronomy. Jeremiah 7, beginning at verse 1, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house, and proclaim there this word, and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all you of Judah who enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Do not trust in these lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if you thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if you thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbour, if you do not oppress the stranger, the fatherless and the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, or walk after other gods to your hurt, Then I will cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers, for ever and ever. Again and again in Deuteronomy, Moses stressed how the Israelites' existence in the land of Canaan was conditional, and that if they disobeyed, they would not remain in the place that God had chosen for them. Look at the particular warning in Jeremiah 7, verse 4. Do not trust in these lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. The implication being that, yes, this was God's temple, and yes, they were the chosen people, but none of that mattered if they weren't obedient. And that obedience included how they treated strangers, orphans, and widows an idea that goes directly back to Deuteronomy and some of the covenant stipulations that were incumbent upon them to follow. As in Deuteronomy 24.17, You shall not pervert justice due the stranger or the fatherless, nor take a widow's garment as a pledge. And we're also going to look at Deuteronomy 24 and verse 21. 
When you gather the grapes of your vineyard, you shall not glean it afterwards. It shall be for the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow. And um, chapter 10, verse 18 and 19. He administers justice for the fatherless and the widow, and loves the stranger, giving him food and clothing. Therefore love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. And chapter 27, verse 19. Cursed is the one who perverts the justice due the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow. And all the people shall say, Amen. And so to finish the day, read Jeremiah 4.4 4 and compare it to Deuteronomy 30 verse 6. What is the message there to the people and how does the principle equally apply to God's people today? Jeremiah 4.4 4, Circumcise yourselves to the Lord and take away the foreskins of your hearts. You men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn so that no one can quench it because of the evil of your doings. And chapter 30, verse 6 of Deuteronomy. And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, that you may live. This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind, and It Is Written. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. Remember, God is always faithful.